to learn about how to keep our machine clean and in good working order. We're going to start first by uh, getting some basic things that you need in your sewing room or in your sewing kit that you'll want to keep it at hand on hand all the time. Um, one thing that I have here is um, just some du can of dust spray or dust remover and this is a, a must-have in your sewing kit. It's just a basic can of air spray air and you also want to get some sewing machine oil. This is not your WD-40 but it has to be specifically sewing machine oil. There is a difference you should be able to find that at your local um, sewing shop store. So um, you want to have that on hand as well because we're going to be oiling a few things. As I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the lesson, you need to look at your manual that goes with your machine because each machine is different and your manufacturers have you to oil and clean your machine totally different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my machine based upon the way my, my manufacturer wants me to clean it and based upon what I found to be best for myself as well. So we're, first of all, we're going to start by removing the thread off of the machine. We're just going to take it off and wind our thread back up. And we're also going to take out the bobbin and out the bobbin case. And we're going to wind that back up to keep everything nice and neat. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to start with our spray air. And what we want to do is I always like to start with my bobbin first. And as you can see, I'm going to give you a little close-up. I want you to see the dust that has accumulated just from that one sewing project. So let me let you take a look at that a little closer. Okay, here's a close-up of the bobbin case area. As you see, we got a little bit of dust going on in there. So I'm going to take my spray air, and it just pretty much simply just, just spray. And what we're going to do is clean. You see the dust that flies out? This and I like to just kind of clean everything up. You see all the dust that starts to fly out? Okay, so that cleans up our uh, area where our bobbin loads up. Now, there is another thing we want to clean up too, and this is our bobbin case itself. Okay, we're going to clean the bobbin case pretty much the same way we clean the um, housing unit here. We're just going to take our air and you're going to spray right inside. You'd be surprised at how much dust can accumulate just from sewing and the threads going down inside the bobbin case. So we're going to spray some air on it. Another thing I like to do too, because sometimes the, the air doesn't get everything out, I take my seam ripper and I'll just kind of like scrape around on the inside just to remove all the dust. And then once I do that, I'll spray it again and see some dust was removed just that quickly. Simple as that. Okay, now we've cleaned that. Another area we want to clean is going to be up under our um, needle plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the presser foot off. And I've got these two little screws here, so I'm going to unscrew them. There's one screw. And I have to kind of open this up to get to the other screw, so I'm going to unscrew it too. This is also what you would do if you want to replace your needle plate. If it gets damaged by a needle, you can, this is what you do is take the screws off. So now I'm just going to lift up and I'm going to remove the plate. And when I remove the plate, you can see there's more dust down inside of here. So I'm going to take the air and I'm going to spray the dust out. Just clean it all up. And this is a closer look at our feed dogs too. Okay, now that we've got these parts off, we're going to put a little bit of machine oil um, into our machine. And the back back here, which I'm not going to give too much detail because this is something that you're, um, the person that cleans your machine or maintenance your machine would work on that. So you don't want to really put any oil in there. But we're going to take the housing off. I'm going to unscrew that. And undo that and we're going to remove this so we can, I can show you how we oil that. Okay, now that we've cleaned that, we're going to clean the housing. Uh, we've already cleaned the housing rather. We're going to oil the housing. So we're going to slide these little things, the little clamps that hold the housing in place. And we're going to take it off. And sometimes you get like dust on top of this. You just wipe it off. Or if you prefer, you can use your spray air to clean it off. Then we're going to take out the other part of the housing. 
as well and you just want to kind of spray it off and make sure it's clean. Now inside the housing, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, I'm going to try to position the camera so you can take notice of it, but I'm going to tilt the machine. Inside the back, when you turn the handle, you'll see that the housing uh, unit turns and there's a little movement back there in the back. That's where we want to get a little bit of machine oil back there because that part can get really, really, not crusty, but a little stiff. So you want to keep oil back there just a little bit. It only takes a few drops. So let's see how we do that. But I'm just going to squeeze a couple of drops of oil back behind there. Okay, and that's pretty much all you want to do there. So now that I've oiled um, the housing unit, I'm going to turn my hand wheels so that I can go in here and I'm just going to wipe away as you can see some of the dirt that comes off. I'm kind of wiping the excess oil because you don't want this to end up in your fabric and on your thread. So I'm just wiping the excess. Okay, and now that we've got the excess wiped, I'm going to put my parts back together. I'm going to go back in the opposite way that we took them out. So this rides up in there on the right hand side. And then the cover or the outer part of the housing sits right up on top like this and then these clamps lock on that side and this one locks on that side of course and we can put our bobbin case back inside and we're done now that we're finished cleaning the top we're going to put our throat plate or our needle plate back together so it just sits back on top and we're going to put our screws back in that one goes there and then this one goes here we're going to take our screwdriver and we're going to tighten those up all right I have to open this up to get in there to tighten this one because it's a kind of tight spot so I'm going to screw it back in place There we go. You don't want to get these too tight because there will be a pain to try to get loose if you get them too tight. So now I'm going to put my presser foot back on, tighten it up, and that takes care of that. Okay, now that we've cleaned our bobbin case and under our feed dogs, now we're going to clean the final part of our machine. And that's the unit um, here on the left, and this is where all your the gears turn and move everything up and down. So I'm going to give you a close up of this so that you can see how to clean this area or to keep it dust and dirt free and how you can keep it oiled. Okay, as I mentioned, this is the um, final part of our cleaning. Um, some of your machines, this section may not even open. On a, I notice on a lot of the newer machines, it doesn't open. I love uh, my brand of machine because it does give me an opportunity to open this so that I can clean it. And of course, this is where you, you change your light bulb as well. But all of these parts in here get dirty and dusty. So you're going to take your air and you're just going to spray them out the same way. They don't, get as dirty, they don't get as dirty or dusty as the bottom half, but they do get dusty and dirty. So I'm going to spray those. Now, I'm also going to oil any moving parts that connect like any parts that work against each other or work against themselves we're going to put a little oil and the way to do that I have turned my machine off so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm raising my my needle up and down so that I can look inside and see what parts are moving so whichever parts are moving or rubbing up against another part I'm going to add a drop of oil all it takes is a drop and then as I put a drop of oil I move it to make sure it gets good and oiled and then there's another part here so I'm going to put like a drop there and see how that one moves as well and then there's another part you probably can't see back in the back but I'm going to put a drop on that too and then the final part is right here there's another one that moves or has like a joint so to speak so I'm going to put a drop of oil there and I'm just moving the hand wheel up and down um, manually to just to work the oil in. And it's as simple as that. And this keeps your machine in good working order. 
Okay, now we've cleaned our machine and we've oiled our machine and we're ready to sew another few thousand miles or another few thousand stitches, I should say. But um, you want to do those procedures to, as far as cleaning your machine. Probably when you've used your machine, maybe about 10 to 15 hours, you want to clean the dust out and re-oil it. I like to kind of blow my dust out when I change colors of thread because sometimes the different colors, you know, the lint comes off the thread, so to speak. So I kind of like to use the air to kind of brush it out and clean it out real good. Our machine has been cleaned. Uh, we've dusted it out. There is one more cleaning that I want to tell you about, and this is one that you want to have the professionals do. That's your professional sewing machine repair person. Because you have gears under the machine and you have uh, gears here that turn and operate the machine, you can remove this case, at least my sewing machine company gives me instructions how to remove this, take it off and clean it properly and oil it. But I'm not really comfortable doing that. I kind of like to leave that to the professional. So you might want to do maybe every once every three to six months. You want to take your machine in to the repairman and I'll have him to service it. And what he would do is take the machine cover off the top and the bottom, clean it real good, give it an oil, and then there's some parts that actually require a grease that we can't get. It's only, you know, the repairmen have this. But it really keeps your machine nice and um, in good working order. So you want to make sure you do that every periodically is have um, the service person to um, clean your machine and keep it in good working condition.